All right, in this video, we're gonna be going through the palpation of the external abdominal oblique. So as you can see, we have our person in the supine position. And for this, I'm gonna be actually palpating a cross body, uh, making it a little bit easier for the camera to see. But also, when I'm palpating ribs, I really like to have my hand as flat as possible over top of these ribs. Um, just as a kind of a poor example, I don't wanna do this to them too much. But if I'm often standing on the same side, I end up going in with more fingertips. And if your client is ticklish, they're really not gonna like you having kind of jabbing fingers into ribs. Or if you're palpating more cross body over top of ribs, you can actually stick your fingers more in intercostal spaces. You're having a broader pressure. It often overrides a tickle sensation and it makes it a little bit easier for you to count and for them to tolerate what you're about to do. Okay, so we're gonna be going through the origin and the insertion, obviously. In the rectus abdominis video, if you've already watched that, we've discussed that the pelvis is more stable. So a lot of textbooks often consider this one the typical origin and then our ribs being more of the insertion. So depending on which reference text you're using, you may see one or the other. So we're gonna start with the pelvis today. So I'm gonna get my person to start by taking uh, this part of their hand, known as the only border part of their hand, kind of walking down the pelvis until they feel a bony object. Do I have permission to palpate everything above your hand? Yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is starting at in around the umbilicus, and I'm gonna be walking down, walking down, walking down, until I feel the pubic bone. In the center here is the pubic symphysis. Just lateral to that is known as the pubic crest. And finally, a little bit further than that is known as the pubic tubercle. So the external abdominal oblique is attaching to this pubic tubercle as well as the pubic crest. So that's two of its origins. Another one of its origins is down the center seam here known as the linea alba. But again, depending on your reference, they also might talk about this abdominal aponeurosis. So this abdominal aponeurosis is a sheath that's covering over top of rectus abdominis. So some texts will say that the obliques end here, and this is again more of a connective tissue versus some are saying that connective tissue from oblique goes all the way to center. So you might read either one of those. So that's the third origin. If you're able to move your hand away now, just for a second, I'm gonna go and palpate right to here, otherwise known as the anterior superior iliac spine. And then this muscle also attaches here along this anterior iliac crest. So you have the anterior iliac crest, you have the pubic tubercle, pubic crest, and the linea alba as your origins. Now the muscle fiber direction of our external oblique actually comes down this direction. So for some people, again, thinking more the ribs or the upper attachment, and then these pelvis bones are more the insertion. So because of that, this muscle has a contralateral rotation action. So all of your abdominal muscles typically help flex the trunk at spinal joints. However, this contralateral rotation is gonna be coming by pulling these ribs towards the opposite side. So what I'm asking my person to do right now basically is a contralateral rotation crunch. where He's trying to bring his elbow across the other side of the body and you'll start to see some of those external oblique fibers sticking up and you can come back down, excellent. So the other attachment for external oblique is gonna be the lower ribs. So depending on which reference, oftentimes it's ribs five through 12, or otherwise known as the lower eight. So I'm actually gonna start by reaching all the way around and in behind, and the last rib of the rib cage, which is one of your floating ribs, is known as rib 12. So right in this area, and then just above that, we have rib number 11, the first one to connect into the costal cartilage will be number 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. And just as one of those notes, oftentimes rib number 5 is really, really close to the male areola. So that might be just a nice, easy reference point if you're working with the male. So the origins or insertions all along the ribs, not the costal cartilage, but the actual ribs themselves, which means they're more on that anterolateral surface of those ribs. So again, fibers running down towards the center here and then down towards the pelvis down here. So one more time, I'm just gonna ask him to do a little bit of that lateral rotation crunch, good. So right along here is our muscle fibers with a large concentration of that muscle being over top of these ribs in here. We're gonna go through internal oblique in a different video, but what's interesting, I'll just point it out, is that the external fibers are running this way over top of the internal fibers, which are running this way. So you really wanna focus 
on this muscle fiber direction running inferior and central. All right, that's going to conclude our palpation of external abdominal oblique.